Um, Cabros have a small company which is Shukrea, it's a, a software engineer studio. Um, that's my um, Twitter profile, I'm polymorphic on Twitter. Um, well, and right now I have this startup which is Quaderno, it's a, an invoicing uh, application for Stripe to make, I, I don't know if you know Stripe, the payment yeah. way. Okay. So, um, what we do is um, the Stripe just send the payment receipt to your customer when you charge a credit card. So, uh, what we do is um, instead of uh, sending a, a receipt, we send a, a, a full invoice with you know VAT number, um, VAT tax rates, uh, billing data, and all that stuff, which is something you have to do if you have a European cast, uh, company or you have European customers. And from January the 1st, we also process the new VAT law for digital services. Um, well, if you want, we can talk about that afterwards, okay? Um, well, um, I'd like to share, you, uh, share with you my story, how I, I created a company here in Gran Canaria, which is the Canary Islands, a small point in this uh, long west coast of Africa, it's the European Union, but we are a geographical African, and it's a small point there, and how we got customers all around the world but I'm moving from here, well, I'm traveling sometimes during the summer across Europe, uh, but yeah, almost all the team is there in Gran Canaria, okay? Um, to start, I would like to talk about the periphery, okay? So, um, in, in internet, the, we can say the center of internet is the USA, right? So where almost all the companies are, is the big, above all the big ones, so maybe China as well. Um, well, I live in a small island which just has about 15,000 <coughs> people. This is the GDP, it's about $25,000 per person, okay? And we have an employment rate of 33% right now, so it's really big. Uh, our main industry is the tourism. Um, in this island, we, we get um, around uh, 3 million people tourists a year and the, all the islands we really got uh, 11 million people uh, per year uh, we got more while well, we have a power in tourism well, like in Spain, Spain is the second country in the world in tourism right? um, most of the tourists are German and UK people also Europe people um, we belong to Spain, 47 million people. Okay. This is the GDP is $29,000 more or less. And then the employment rate is 25% more or less. Okay. Just from small point to a little bit of point. Um, we belong to the European Union with much more people, 518 uh, people. The GDP is a little bit bigger, though there are big differences between the countries. Germany is very rich, uh, Greece is not so much. <laughs> and the unemployment rate is not so bad, it's 10 more or less 20% <coughs> <coughs> against the 25% in Spain, right? And we, this is, I'm coming from the ultra perfect region, Gran Canaria, to a perfect country <coughs> Spain, in the European Union. The, and the European Union is a peripheric region of the center of the world. <coughs> uh, the United States is more or less the same population in the European Union, but the GDP is much bigger and the unemployment rate is much less. I think it's even less right now. So um, that makes a big difference when you try to start your star. Because you, if you um, create a company from here, of this population against here, of uh, this population. And it's not only the, the, the market uh, size, but also the money that people have to spend. For example, this is the average wage, 2012. 
and you know the monthly wage in Luxembourg is this stuff, the richest country on average wage is four thousand dollars. Uh, you say it's four months. Okay. Um, Germany is thirteen and spend the twenty. So, yeah. 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 So if you are developing a business for this only for the Spanish market, this is the money people have to spend, okay, every month. But this is the money uh, UK people have for free lessons. <coughs> Much more. No way free lessons retain. This is quite interesting because um, in my experience more most of the business of oh, startups, entrepreneurs in Spain develop their products for the Spanish market. Um, unless you are developing something which is very, very local for, for this market, I think it's a mistake. Because the market size is small, an internet size, that's only 40 million people, and the, average, the money people have to spend in, the, or in apps or business, or I don't know, Purchases is not so big, okay? Instead of Thailand, Sweden, United Kingdom. So, um, but despite that, uh, I decided to create my company in the place where I live, where I was born. And I'm going to tell you the story of the enterprise of my small company, right? Mm -hmm. How was it? I, um, I started my own. Um, this is a story of places, um, moments in the time. Right? Um, I started a company in, in my place, 2001, that's a long time ago. <laughs> um, what it did was um, this very, very tiny uh, web app to manage my invoicing. Because I, I was a freelancer and at that moment the only uh, invoicing apps were desktop apps very awful, very complicated, so I decided to create, I'm also a developer, so I created <coughs> stuff to send my invoices to the customer. I, I remember um, the beginning, my first customer told me, uh, why don't you send me a paper invoice, you know? So, what is that? It's PDF, like that. <coughs> now it's something very complicated, but the moment it was not. Um, yeah, that was the beginning. It was a small prototype, just for me, and then I decided, um, at that moment uh, I was uh, working as a freelancer, I, I made development consultancy for a lot of startups or, or businesses. So in 2015, 5, 2005, I, I decided to move from services to product, because that's, that's what I wanted to do uh, and I'm doing now. So, I remember I was in a coffee shop, taking a coffee with some friends and we started talking about uh, what we can do to make a product. So I, I talked about the, the, that invoicing app I made for me. Um, we decided to make it a little bigger, not too much, and launch it um, for the Spanish market. Mistake. <laughs> um, oh my God. Was good. Um, we were featured in some blocks. Um, yeah, we still we got some customer and bad customers as well. So we discovered, we found out that we had maybe a business and we can work in that. But we hadn't um, enough money to spend all our time on that um, application. So we decided to combine the, this new uh, business with consultancy. And that's what struck me. I mean, we didn't uh, look for external investment to develop our business. So that was bootstrapping means. So develop a business without external funding. Okay. So you can use your savings, your credit card, you can sell your car because you don't need a car. Uh, <laughs> You can rent a flat instead of buying. Uh, 
know. Same you the can, journey, same the watches, for example, same the motorbike. Yeah. Well, yeah, why not? If you believe in your business, why not? Right. Um, so I, the goal here was trying to figure out if we had a business and we were able to get new customers, um, get profitable, you know. And le at least for the very first year, and then we can could look for uh, external investment. Until now, we have no external investment. We have enough customer. Our investors are our customers. Okay. So in 2006, um, we launched the first version. We call it Endeavor. Um, yeah, we was was good, um, but it wasn't enough. In 2009, uh, that's very close to my place, and I was playing Palace, which is a beach sport in, in the, at the beach, and yes, and we decided to uh, that. We were three people at that moment, and we decided that one of us um, spent most of the time working on Endeavor, that the first version, okay, and the other two were working with external customers to get enough money to pay the bills and to eat. Right? Um, so in 2010, we launched the second version, um, yes, and we got more customers. And then, uh, during the summer in 2012, in I was in Copenhagen and I decided to finish the services, the consultancy, and I spent all my time and all the ma my money, all my savings in, in this app. So I also decided to create a new version with a new name, a new branding, new interface, new code, and we launched Quaderno, uh, which is quite different. Um, I hired two more people, uh, front-end developer and one more developer, uh, back-end developer. And we were four at that moment. Uh, yeah, with that discussion, we got much more customers. We were much more happy, uh, which is very important because we were doing what, what we wanted to do. That's yeah, what was the goal perfect. And then, um, and that's, I, last March, uh, we found out uh, that Stripe didn't manage invoices, so we create special version for Stripe users, and that's what we are, where we are getting more and more customers in a while. Above all, um, Northern Europe mark, uh, yeah, customers and US mark, uh, customers, Canada, Canada, Australia as well. That's, a, that's what we are doing right now. So, um, things I've learned during all this process think globally, <coughs> internet market only have sense if you launch an application for the whole internet, not for the Spanish market, not for the German market, for all the markets, because the revenue is quite low for customers, so you need a lot of customers, and the Spanish market is not a big market, actually. I think we are well, more uh, of us that are Spanish, and we know it's Spain, blah, 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 but for a uh, US <coughs> customer, Spain is like talking about Mexico, talking about Greece is not a special place, so and it's small. Be patient because you need a lot, a lot of time to be profitable. In fact, I always ask people uh, when when you told me how you can launch a, uh, a project with um, external money, I told them, um, I asked them, uh, do you have enough money to survive for one year by yourself without income? because people don't talk about that, but most of the startups we know every day, actually, I know right now, uh, they don't invoice anything. You know? Their income is 0.0, .0 or 
200 euros. I know famous stars which are in more than nothing at all. So the beginning is quite hard because uh, and you need sometimes to know your customers, to improve your business, you know. Uh, yeah. And my third and final advice, enjoy the process, enjoy the way. Because that's the most interesting part of all this business. Mm -hmm. Not only the money and the getting rich or love, right? But that's very, very important if you <coughs> to, need to be patient. Um, <coughs> take 12 months, two years, to be a profitable business and to call yourself a business, not a hobby. You know? Because you start like a hobby and then you, you create a business. And that's it. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. When we come from a MVP to a startup, when, when when it became from an MVP to a product that fully works in product? Our process was a little bit different because we developed the MVP in house and we, <coughs> we started to share the, the app with some uh, special people you know, to, to be. To know if to know if the if they can use the app with our help, if they were interested in the app, and then we were uh, featured in uh, um, two or three blocks in Spain, and at that moment there went uh, many invoices and apps in Spain, so we had a lot of track at the beginning. What's not easy. right now? Uh, I would do uh, an MVP. And I would test it with potential customers. But uh, the gap between the MVP and the. You know, uh, are you talking about the MVP for, um, the, uh, for internal, for in house work? Yeah, or? no, for like, what the customer would see, what's the end product, what would you do the testing? When it became. My theory is that you cannot spend more <coughs> than uh, six weeks in an MVP. If your MVP uh, takes more than six weeks, you are wasting your time. And when do you start selling it? Do you start selling it before or do you start selling it afterwards? From the very beginning. Mm -hmm. From the very beginning. Uh, uh, before or after, after the MVP? <coughs> as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I also mm -hmm. would like to add, some, to add something because an MVP has a lot of sense when you are in an uncertain market doing something. Mm -hmm new but this is uh, this sector is super super known there are a lot of competitors, yeah, now competitors. Yeah. i mean you don't have to you don't need to validate what is something mm -hmm. you just need a good product because the market is out there you need to be oh, maybe or you... better than the other ones or cheaper than the other ones yeah right? uh, but i agree um, maybe you can validate if you are able to sell the business, not if you, people are. Uh, your channels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If people are willing to, to build your. Uh, mm -hmm. to pay your, uh, your mm -hmm. product, you know? But I think you can do an MVP in right now with current tools in one, two week. Yeah. And that's. With the WordPress, with the Presto Shop, uh, with HTML, no backend, a lot of more manual process, a lot of manual process and do not uh, develop or spend time and money in development process until you don't have your first customer okay. So, okay, so how many times are you <coughs> trying to sell your product before you can say that you failed? How many times do you spend so yeah, maybe you are trying to sell the product, but nobody wants to buy. So you keep trading, but there is a point when you okay. Yeah, yes. it's um, because it will happen. My money. If you have a good product, you can <coughs> spend a couple of hours and so on. Then I think there's you can make a curve <coughs> where the x-axis is the. <coughs> 
the necessity of the, the customer to buy your product, for example. Yeah. If you have a toothache, you look in internet and in Google for a dentist, and you go to the dentist right now, you choose the first option or the second option, and you go to the dentist, and you pay 100 euros, 200 euros for that product. So that's a very compulsory uh, uh, problem, right? Then you have B2B problems. Business are willing to pay to spend money in B2B. Then you have B2C problems. And the problem with B2C is the market is quite big, but the necessity is not so big. So you have to spend a lot of time and a lot of money to make people to, to be able to, to spend their money with you. And the problem is that most, more peop most of the people are trying to do B2C businesses and that's very hard if you don't have enough money in your bank because you have to spend a lot of money to make marketing, to make people to believe that they need your product. You know? So if you don't have money or you want to, to have a profitable business in less time, my advice to choose a B2C business, a B2B business or very a big big pain like you know like having a toothache, you know, something quite big. So I've seen some small businesses uh, they have the you're selling the product in just one week, two weeks. And they are profitable in it's not very common, right? But six months or something like that. And you know, uh, my, my advice is to focus on mm -hmm. simple ideas for a big market, for a very big market. For example, I know a guy who's selling, he's in the States, and uh, he's selling um, uh, stock photos. So he's hiring a photographer, a professional photographer, for every month. And he pays uh, that photographer to make uh, 20 photos, something very good photos, okay? And then he shares by mail, I think f between 5 and 10 photos for free. If you are in his um, newsletter, his uh, newsletter uh, email list, so you get a, between 5 and 10 photos for free. <coughs> but if you want the, all the photos and if you want to access the archive, okay, you have to pay, I mean, between five and ten dollars per month. And um, it's profitable from the second month, something like that. And <laughs> um, yeah, and he has thousands of customers. And it's so very simple service. It's not an invoice and app, which is quite complex or um, social network or all that bullshit. <laughs> So, I also know a guy who's selling uh, video tutorials for carpets. Yeah, and he earned a lot of money. So, uh, the point with the internet is you can do such a freaky thing just for, for a niche so, so small. If you work for the whole world and if you work in English, you have a lot of possibilities because you have you can have customers all around the world. Right? What do you think of all this time? Right, you say 2001 to 2014, so lots of experience. So what's the biggest mistake you think you guys made along the way? The mistakes I made yeah. in the process. <coughs> you think you some of the you know you say learnings about enjoying and those are positive. Yeah. At the very beginning, it was quite hard because it was the internet was quite new, so there went many SaaS in the internet market, especially in the Spanish market. <coughs> so we had a lot of problems to make people understand that they have to pay for a SaaS application, a monthly subscription. So they thought it was better to pay for a desktop app or something like that. Now the market is more mature, so it's much more easier to sell our uh, solution. I made a lot of mistakes, but I was quite naive at the beginning. Uh, like more people, I thought 
you can sell a business and internet without marketing or with a few marketing actions. And I think you have to spend at least the same quality amount in marketing and development. You need great product with a great message and a great content and communication. Um, yeah. <coughs> we were engineers. We haven't we hadn't um, business people in the team, so that was hard because I had to learn about business, marketing, all the stuff, and we hadn't enough money to 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 hire a person to do that. Um, yeah, and then at the beginning I didn't take uh, metrics. And that's very very important about why you want to, to know if you are if you have a business or a hobby. If you are working for something which is which is going to give you a lot or enough money to live or just it's just a hobby for the weekend, right? So you have to know about CAC, LTV, churn rate, all this stuff is it's very important. And then as an engineer I try to develop as much as possible and now I uh, wouldn't do it that, like that. I started like a MTP, very cheap, just to test, just an HTML page to know if people are willing to pay for that with a newsletter list or something like that. Um, maybe a payment pay now button just to test if people want to pay. Yeah, and to not spend so much money in development. <coughs> and to spend more money and time in market research, which is much more important. <coughs> now the, you have a lot of competitors, uh, competitors, so it's a little bit harder to make a profitable business, but I think there's also uh, people are more willing to pay in internet and the market is much bigger than 10 years ago. So, um, so you first built Quaderno for Spanish marketing as well? Yeah. And you spent so many years. And, well, all, all these years. Yeah. And then you launched Quaderno IO, which is just this thing that is Stripe, uh, <coughs> international. What is the difference between the point, um, how long did you to, to well, get to the break-even in the Spanish product and in the... In the Spanish market, as we had no so many expenses, we were profitable in the first year. Uh, we are, we haven't either a big um, a salary, so can we spend more money and more time on this project, right? Um, then when we launched Guadalajara, um, we launched an English version and a Spanish version. Um, we focus uh, our marketing efforts in the Spanish version. But we got some customers out of Spain. It's it okay. Not enough. Um, where we launched Guadalajara Tayo for Stripe users. With the same marketing efforts, we got more revenues, much more customers. We are, because we are. Um, Reaching a world market instead of a Spanish market, which is quite small. That was May, last May? Yeah, last May. Yeah. And now we're integrating PayPal, Vistapa, Braintree, and all this stuff. So, yeah. So, my, my advice is always make your apps the perfect version in English and launch in the, the national market. In fact, with the new version for an uh, I had many customers in UK, States, um, Germany, France, and just one customer in Spain. Not well, two customers in Spain. And one in two. Hmm? And one in two. Hmm. And it's a little bit harder to the Spanish people pay for an app. People are used to. To use their office for free and so on. Not, not everybody. 
you have to do more, you have to put more effort in sales, in the sales process to convince the people to pay for your product. I have a comment related to one point you put before, which was um, think something simple, yeah. like make something simple and profitable from yeah. the very beginning. But sometimes, um, actually us, we're <laughs> trying to solve a problem, so the solution is not simple at all, because the pain is quite big, yeah. and uh, we need to think about a lot of stuff, and it's complex, yeah. and there is no way to don't make it complex. So maybe it's not a good problem to start. Yeah, so that, that was the point. But at the same time, you say your own product was not simple either. Yeah, you say it's complex. Uh, the new version? Yeah, the, the very first version was well, not too complex because uh, the only thing you have to do is a form to create an invoice and send invoice to the customers. And from then to, until now, we haven't added new features, right? and now it's quite complex. But that version we made for Strike users in May, last May, uh, we did it in two, three weeks, and was and the pain was quite simple. Was so they want to send an invoice to the customers, and they don't want it to, uh, they don't want to uh, um, create invoice uh, manual. So we just connect the Stripe API with our small API, and we get the, the data from Stripe, and we create and send invoice to the customer. And that's something you, it's a very specific problem, and you can get it in one month, maybe two months, that's much more. So, yeah, maybe for us it would be simple to do something like that. Yeah. Also, but the complex part is to understand the market we are buying, because it's not something we know, it's, it's something really new yeah. for us. Even if we are customers for that market, and we had the pain we are trying to face, mm. it's complex. So we are going to spend a lot of time in research and trying to define something yep. before to be and, and <coughs> But the problem we have is that we are not developers. Yeah. So when you um, say that you were hiring front ends, etc., you were properly hiring them or you were putting them as a thing? I mean, uh, how, what was your advice at this point? Because we cannot build the MVP. If you have about the people who work with you, right? If you have a, I'm, I think if you have a digital product, your core is the software. <coughs> so in my opinion, you have to, have, if you're a business person, you need a technology partner. I mean, do not hire, well, you can hire a person for the first version, for the MVP, just to test the, your idea, but, if you have the business, you have to offer a share, uh, your company share, 20%, 20, whatever you want, uh, to make the developer to be part of your team and to be part of your company. And that's very important because if not, you are hiring um, a mercenary, you know, something who's working for money. I, mean, you know, I can't, con can't think about that. Yeah. <laughs> at, the, at the moment you needed more people, you were properly hired. I mean, after you were like three people, because I came late, sorry. So uh, I, I didn't get we, some other We also work with the... freelancers, you know. Okay. So we do not have enough money, enough work to, to make us you know, marketing tasks. Yeah. We hire some freelancers for some months, and when we have enough work for them, we can hire them. But at the beginning, we started with freelancers. And make our expenses uh, much smaller. Um, you have, <coughs> have decided to start your company in uh, the periphery. Yeah. What about hiring in case you need to scale up at some point? In case you need all of a sudden 20 developers or 200 developers. <coughs> but you don't need 20 developers in just one day, right? It's a process. You, now we have five, maybe next week we can be six, uh, in two months we are ten, so you can look for the people. Um, I believe in remote working, so our um, team is anywhere. You know? In fact, our marketer is right now in Brussels. Uh, for the last five years, I traveling to I've been traveling to Germany to Berlin and I've been in Berlin living in Berlin for the summer 
on my savings in Frank area. And I have no problem if you want. If you want to work with me, I have no problem if you are in the States or because you don't need to be together in the same room to, to make our work. So instead of looking for people good people in your market, in your city, you're looking for good people in the world. So it's much easier. Is it cheaper? Not always cheaper because if you're looking for a very good developer, it's not cheap. But it's my, it's a little bit easier. Yeah. So your market is bigger. Yeah. What have been your main uh, sources of customer acquisition? What? So, so how, how is my customer? Yeah. For how did you find the? Uh, how did you uh, attract the attention of people who are using Stripe to uh, start testing or using whatever? How do I find that? Or, or how much money do I spend to to find that? <coughs> Uh, where do you spend the money? When? Where? Which where? platform do you uh, spend? We use um, Guerrilla Marketing. So uh, we launched the product in Protestant in Hacking Years. Uh, we are making more content marketing. Mm -hmm. We are working in SEO, so we have a good position on Google Rank. Uh, I've tested Twitter ads as well, it's okay. And we are working uh, with retargeting uh, with uh, perfect, we use uh, perfect audience to, to make retargeting. So our marketing um, workflow is getting traffic to, good traffic to, to our page and then retargeting them in our, in our networks like Twitter or Facebook, whatever, to get more traffic, then we try to uh, make a nurturing process with the customers, so if we, if you give us uh, your email, we can send you some stuff about billing, invoicing, VAT stuff, and stuff, but yeah, it works. <coughs> it's not very expensive, huh? but it's quite, B2B is not easy, because you have to convince the business to to pay for your solution. Um, B two C is a little bit easier, but you cannot ask for much money to a consumer. You know, they pay five euros, ten euros per month. In fact, but a business can spend fifty euros, ninety euros per month, more than one hundred euros. Per Do you use a CRM? Sorry? Do you have a CRM? Yeah. To which one? It's not so good for me to be in my experience. So we are trying, we tried SEM in AdWords. Um, CRM, uh, customer relation management. Ah, sorry. 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 Yes, we are using uh, Slack CRM and <coughs> Now I'm trying a new, uh, it's not a new app, it's new for me. Uh, it's um, Active Campaign. So at the beginning I, I developed um, an email workflow. So when somebody uh, came to my page, I'm going to show you my page.
sample invoice so you can to give uh, us your, your email so we send you a sample invoice then you have I have your email and then I send you a follow-up one week later and I try to talk to you about your business what you need invoice and all this stuff and yeah I designed process an email process to do that and yeah and then I use I I did it manually for the first three months, trying to look for the perfect content. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and now I'm using Active Campaign to automate all that stuff. And it works. Uh, if you if you answer the, the the messages, which is the most important thing, you know, people interact with you. So you can you can take a coffee in internet with that person and talk about with him or her about the problems or what do they need, uh, an inbox solution, all this stuff. If they are using Stripe or they are using PayPal or whatever, or this, that's that's what we are doing. So we also have for um, <coughs> yeah, that's the blog. So here we are. We publish about new features and invoicing stuff, and the new VAT rules. Um, um, uh, company um, info about how we are making our marketing, for example, here. Um, so if you give us your email, we can send you stuff about invoicing and billing, trying to to establish a conversation with you about your business and your company. That's what we do. It works. People want to be here to tell your problem and look for a nice and easy solution to that problem. And if you are able to, to do that, I think I mean I think you are willing to spend your money at least for one, two months if to see if you are quite good, good enough to, to solve your problem. Um, what is Lean Startup for you? And have you been applying Lean Startup? Or it's something you did from the beginning? Or, or not? You learned on the way? So what can you tell for us? For me, uh, Lean Startup is, um, is about testing all the time. It's about do something, doing something very simple and try to know if you are in the right way or you have to, to take another way to, to make a, pro, a good product, you know? You have Lean Startup is talking with your customers all the time. It's about taking metrics to see if you are in the right way, if your customer is doing what you do, what you think they, you are, they are doing or not. It's about be surprised and sh um, change your, the way you're taking to go where to the right path and yeah. So can you explain us the time you were very surprised because you thought one thing and then you test something. Yeah, but that's very common. That's because you think you you know the the, the real truth, but it's, 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 uh, most of the time. People use your tool for other stuff, or in, in a different way you where you, you design the interface, you know? And that's very common. Not the point where you are changing your app every single day, you know? But it's 
very, it's about marketing research. It's about that all the time. And then combine that with a great product, with a great interface, very used to do, uh, to use, that's very important. Because you, you can have a great business plan, you can have a very a good market research, and then you have a, an awful product, you know, nobody wants to use. So. And you don't need a lot of money to test your product. The best part is to uh, develop in your product or launch a, I don't know, a landing page or something like that. It's quite easy and yeah, quite uh, cheaper, right? So. You don't need uh, an any, any business center to launch a product. And when you test something, you do it in a small piece of your customers, or you test it on all of them, or you know, when you do change, or depending on of the change. No, I, small changes. I prefer to do small changes and see what the if it works or not, and then make other changes. If you change too many things at the same time, you don't know if it's working or not. That's quite complicated. Questions? Uh, do you use a uh, business model canvas? Or? No. Or something no. for your own? No. Okay. <laughs> no. I think it can be useful for some problems, but sometimes it's quite bullshit. Yeah, I think it's a guide. It's good as a guide to, <coughs> to see if you are going well and if you know what you to be sure by yourself. You, if you want to do that and why you want to do, no, that's important. But that's all. Okay. I mean, it's more important to do the stuff. Just do your lunch it and see what's happening. Instead of spending three months in a business plan, um, six months looking for a business schedule, you know, um, six months uh, filling papers to get a grant, or money, some money to. I mean, sometimes I think people are more interested in getting money than in building a product and make it profitable. And we are making businesses, right? No. I want to be a, an expert in business, not an expert in uh, funding. And when you have a profitable business, I'm sure, well, I know business angels and VC are looking for good businesses, so they are going to call you. You don't have to call them, they are going to call you. For sure. Because they have a lot of money and they want to spend that money. And they are looking all the time for interesting business to spend that money. If I had, I don't know, one million dollar, my job were looking for profitable business to spend that money instead of sitting uh, waiting for for a business plan, you know. And there are not so many VC and business uh, angels, so. They are all interconnected. So when one of them discovers the crowd, the toy, it's between them, oh, it's, it's not so difficult. But the most difficult part is building a profitable business or something that can be profitable in short in the short term and test the product. And that's the that's something they want to know before giving you the money. I've knew, I've known uh, many people who have spent more than one year looking for money, and they have no problem at all. Because they are focused all their efforts and that searching. It's, it's crazy. Uh, why Stripe is not sending invoices, and what you gonna do if they? Like because they, it's not their business. I think. I think they are quite smart because we have a simple business. We are a payment gateway. That's it. And all we do is about payments. Credit cards now, they are working in white transfer, they are working in bitcoins, they are working in you know, all the stuff. They are not interested in reports, invoicing, payments. So 
is um, there are many uh, apps like Quaderno, which are around Stripe to do things with Stripe. For example, Barometrics to do uh, reports, or Chambuster for failed payments, or Cookfeed for uh, customer development. Platforms for the form yeah. to implement the Stripe. Yeah. So there's a, a community around Stripe that they are really interesting. In fact, they opened a, a Funding a VC last year with five million dollars or something like that to invest in uh, apps for Stripe. Mm. So they are looking, it's quite a small bit because they are trying to create external <laughs> companies to provide more services to the Stripe users. So Stripe users are happy because they can manage all the business with the Stripe and all those uh, apps, you know. And and you don't have to integrate a whole new process and new developer teams inside the Stripe to develop that feature, which are not uh, their core features. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At this moment, uh, they can change their strategy next month. So you, you seem very happy to have bootstrapped on the way. Yeah. You're quite proud of you know, yeah. it. Uh, is, there, is there a point in which how uh, you change your mind and you do look for funding and what is that trigger? Uh, yeah. I'm thinking about... At which point would it Yeah, sense? I've been thinking about that in the last <coughs> month, more or less. Because now we have a good product, in my opinion. Uh, we have customers. Every week we have many customers, every month, sorry. Um, yeah, and I think we need... In case we need the money, we use it to, to be faster, to develop integrations with other tools, to add some new features, to make more marketing. But we've proved that we have a product. So, yeah, why not? But it's our decision. So, if I talk to a businessman or a business manager or a PC, uh, I don't need that money to survive. I need that money to be uh, bigger or to go faster. And that's a big difference when you have to, to deal with the business and your PC. So what are the pros and cons to be for strapping on? The, pros? <coughs> the pros and cons to be for strapping? Um, the pros are <coughs> more free. More independent. Yeah. Um, so uh, the pros: you are more free, you are independent, you can do whatever you will. You don't have to send a report every month to your investors. <laughs> um, yeah, you can take your decisions by yourself. Cons: you is slow. Slower, much more slow. And you sometimes you need three more people to develop much faster, but you, you cannot. Uh, yeah, that's the main cause. So you have to <coughs> balance the freedom so you know, between the, the long speed, you know, to, um, and the size to, to be bigger. Not always, but. Did you say it's a lifestyle? Yeah, yes. In my opinion, yes. For example, I'm free to travel around the world. I don't need to be here in Barcelona or Madrid to, to be near my investor, you know, unless they want. It's changing right now because um, you know, companies like Buffer or um, Sapir or WordPress, they are remote companies all the time all across the world. So investors that are starting seeing that it's a new way to, to work. But last year, if you, if you needed money, you have to be near the place where your investors are, or at least in, in a big city, in a big European or American city, you know? That's quite clear. Now, yes. And if I look for external investment, that's one my very first condition. 
I want to, to keep my lifestyle. I'm not willing to to uh, spend the whole day working for it's okay, but it's not my point. It's not my point. I prefer to earn less money, um, be more independent. Yeah. So, how do you manage the team? So, how do you manage your team? Team members with uh, one of them is my one of my best friends. Um, the other one, I was so and. Um, I was teaching in the university for as an associate professor, so he was one of my best people in, in the university. So I offered him to start working in our company as a practice. Internship, yeah. And, and then now he's working in the company. And the other one uh, is a, a guy who in, in the city. Ten years ago, working in another project. Yeah. My question is, how do you manage them? How do you work with them? As you know, some oh, sorry, some sorry, sorry. Uh, now I'm in La Spana, so um, we we work together in the same place. Uh, Are you all in the same place? Yeah, right. Now. Well, one of us uh, started to is he's in Brussels. Um, he started to work on general departments, and we use uh, Slack. For internal, uh, internal communication, email, Skype. I mean, yeah. I have to set the goals. That's what we have to do the next two weeks. And I trust you. I, I think. I mean, you don't have to tell me every single second I'm doing this or I'm here. I'm, I'm working at, in front of the computer, I don't mind. I, I just want the goals to be done. So, you know. And if you are good, and if you like your job, there's a no big difference with other um, you know, companies. Uh, our schedule is just five hours a day. We just work five hours a day. But five very focused hours a day. No coffee for half an hour, no breakfast in the middle of the day, nothing at all. We started from, it's flexible, you can from 5 to 1, 5 to 2 or something like that. And we are working the whole time. Um, yeah, it's good day. It's good enough for me. Sorry? 5 to 2? In the morning? No, 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 no. Five hours a day from nine to one or from ten to two or something like that. But it's okay. But if you told me, well, I can also prefer to to, uh, to work in the afternoon because it's much better for me. It's no problem. We have that We have some rights to do that. So, I mean, eight hours. In fact, when you have an, an eight hours uh, time schedule, um, day schedule. You work six, five, six hours, and then you spend a lot of hours. We have no meetings, or just a few meetings, so no meetings, talk to you. And yeah, we are not talking all the time about something you can write down in an email on the Slack. So. And so people have more time for themselves to work in our external products as a freelancer. Or to make sport, or to go to the beach. So, yeah. So, <coughs> it's smooth, right? <coughs> they have more time for themselves, so they are much happier. And they work. When they arrive uh, at the office in the morning, they want to work. Is any investor good? Sir? Approve. Any investor good? Approve. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I'm scrubbing. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I think there's some crazy guy out there. Doing that. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you have? Well, we can talk about you. So. Do you do know networking? Yeah. Any questions? Okay. Thank you.